Namaste kind yogis, welcome to the mat. I am Melissa and I can't wait to guide you through today's practice. We're going to work through a little bit of a beginner's flow, so it might be nice to have some blocks with you. Have them at the top of your mat and we will get started in Cobra. Coming down on to your belly. We'll slide our hands underneath our shoulders, reach our toes back behind us, and then we'll inhale this first one active, pressing up, letting the shoulders fall down the spine, pinky toes in the mat, shoulder blades squeezing together, soft smile across the face, and just feeling where that is happening in the low back, in the chest, in the breath, and then softly bringing the forehead to the mat, Reaching forward for one of your blocks, we'll come up onto our forearms. We'll slide that block underneath our solar plexus, so the space for the rib cage and the upper belly meet. We'll take our elbows underneath our shoulders, setting up in sphinx, but supported, supported sphinx, so it feels a little bit more like cobra. We'll press down through the whole of the arms, pull the shoulders away from one another, reach the toes back. And then gently, just starting to feel that central point of the body pressing into the block. Letting each inhale massage the abdominal organs as it pushes them around the block. And just making a commitment to yourself to move from this space today. So often we move from the axillary positions of the body. We move first from the arms or the legs. But we want to try and shift from the torso to move from the inside out. Change in our bodies happens from the inside out. So move centrally from this location and feel the body start to change. Take a big inhale, maybe open the eyes if you've closed them like I did. Slide the hands under the shoulders. Pick yourself up away from that block. Keep the block right where it is. Sink the hips back, coming into child's pose. Bring the hands onto the blocks. Dip the forehead down to the mat. And you can decide how shoulders feel here. Maybe you lift the block up a level just to get a little bit deeper into the backs of the shoulder caps. Then softly lifting the hips away from the heels. Bring the block just to the outside of the mat, settling in to our table, drag the right knee forward towards the right wrist and point the right toes back towards the left hip, moving towards our pigeon, slide the hip back towards the mat. Now for many of us who are beginners, we'll want to take that block and chalk it under our hip. If you don't have a block, use a rolled blanket or a pillow, anything that will help keep the hips stable. We don't want to fall too far left or too far right. We want the hips and the pelvis to be nice and supported. We'll come down onto our bellies, maybe stacking one hand on top of the other as we rest down. And we won't be here long, so I know this is really uncomfortable for many of us. Just take it as an opportunity to listen to that discomfort and to breathe through it. Taking a big inhale, soft exhale out the mouth. Wiggle the hands and forehead away from one another, taking the hands under the shoulder. And we'll look forward, pick our heart up, lean forward, start to bend that left knee, bringing the heel in towards the bottom and sending it back down. It doesn't have to be a really big bend, we're just starting to wake up that back of the leg. Maybe pull it in so much so that it feels like you're getting a cramp. And then settle it down. Reach for that block underneath you, slide it out to the right side of your body, maybe reaching for your left block. And we'll start to transition here. So tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, bring your chest down towards the mat. I want you to feel like you're gonna do a push-up. As you work into that push-up, I want you to press the earth away, lift the knee into the chest, and come into your plank. Slide the right foot in between the hands, and that might mean that you drop the knee, you drop the other knee, and you pick that foot up and land it in between the hands. So remember, this is all levels. You can do this as challenging or as modified as you like. If that back knee has hit the ground, go ahead and lift it back up and start to roll forward and back. 
using your blocks if you like. They're really nice under hands here, rolling forward and back. Keep the left hand on the block, start to find some stabilization. Step the right foot one space over towards the right hand or the right block for a wider foundation. Press down with the left hand and peel the right hand up, moving the chest towards the right side of your mat. But be mindful of that right hip, it wants to cock out to accommodate, pull it back in. Release the right hand back to the right block. Shift your weight into that right leg and drag your left foot to meet it. Inhale as you walk the blocks forward. Keep the arms forward, but exhale, drop the head. Feel that a lot in the back line of the legs. Slowly drag the blocks back. Step the feet back. One, and then the other. You're in plank on top of your blocks. Might be on their high side, might be on their lower side. Just be mindful to bring the tailbone towards the heels, the heart parallel towards the mat, the center of the body moving in towards itself. And then think about that solar plexus, drop the knees to the mat. Slowly take the blocks out, right and left. And we'll start to shift that left knee in towards the body. So dragging that left knee towards the left wrist, left toes point towards the right hip, drag the right foot back. Situate here, deciding am I too far left, and I shimmy that block under my hip, or am I too far right, and I shimmy that block under the right. Taking a moment to come into our sleeping swan, we'll bring the forearms down, Maybe stacking the hands and letting the hands rest on the back of the hands. We're just breathing here for a few breaths. Notice if you're feeling any tingling. If it feels like it's too much or there's some numbness happening, you can always lift back up. Just be where you're comfortable today. At any time, our practice shifts. So you might have been fully flat in pigeon yesterday, whereas today you feel really high and lifted. That's perfect. Sliding your hands under your shoulders, start to remove that block wherever it may be. Set it out to the side. Keeping ourselves nice and lifted, heart points forward. Start to bend and straighten that right leg. And be okay with however that looks or feels in your body. Next time it comes up, keep it up. Look for the cramp, point the toes, lift the heart away from the leg. And then gently settle the leg back down. Tucking the toes here. Start to think about pressing up into that plank and bringing your leg with you. So bring the chest parallel to the mat, hug the elbows into the body. Start to point the left toes a lot here, and as you exhale, press the earth away, lift the knee. Remember, you can step the foot forward, or you can reach for that leg and slide it back. Knees can come down as they need. If the back knee is down, go ahead and lift it back up, and gentle rocks forward and back forward and back. Maybe using your blocks on either side of the foot again. It's a really nice place to practice as we work on building our strength. Come back to center. Step the left foot towards the left hand. Keep the right hand on the block. Bring the right hip down a little bit. Squeeze the glutes and then start to float that left hand up towards the sky, twisting here. Remember to keep the left hip dragging into the midline of the body, twisting from that central axis of the torso. Bring the left hand down to the mat. Look forward at those feet. Gently step the right foot up to meet the left. Walk the blocks in front of you. Hands onto our blocks on whatever height is best. Heel toe the feet out wide right and left. And then bend the knees as you start to sink the hips down. Maybe mobility isn't quite there for us. And instead of sinking straight down, we put our blocks back behind us. Keeping one in front and one low, we start to bend the hips, drop the hip points onto that block, and sit high. Wherever you are, whether tailbone is down or tailbone is supported on a block, start to pick the chest up. Pull the heart forward, sink the tailbone low. Wrap the shoulders away. Maybe take the elbows in to the knees here. Press into the hands to expand across the pelvic floor. Feel the glutes start to lift up. And 
then gently, slowly start to step down into the feet, hands to the mat, lifting the hips nice and high, heel toe the feet together. A little bit of a balance challenge today. We're going to bring our fingertips way out in front, moving our blocks out of the way as we need. Fingertips connect to the mat. Look in between the thumbs and gently start to rock onto the balls of your feet, maybe coming all the way onto your tippy toes. And then gently sink the heels down, rock all the way back into the heels, lift the balls of the feet. Ooh, that can be seriously intense. One more time, roll forward, lift onto just the big toenails. You've got this, yogis. And then gently drop the heels down. Settle the hands onto the mat. Step the left foot slightly forward in between the thumbs. Step the right foot back. So the feet are about two feet apart. Pull the right hip forward. Take the right hand and find a block. Place it just to the inside of that left foot. Inhale and halfway lift. Bend the knees as much as you need to be here to support the back line of the body. And then inhale, start to spin and spiral that left hand up. Move the shoulders away from one another. And then gently take the left hand down. Lift onto the left foot. So all of our weight is now shifted into our left foot. Right toes are still connected. We're going to bend the left knee, step the right foot back into our runner's lunge. Taking both hands onto the blocks once more. We're going to hollow out the upper back. So think cat spine here. Arch out the upper back, press into the hands, get really light in that left foot, and then hug it into your chest. Step the left foot back with the right, and now you're in plank. Very nice, yogis. Gently bend the elbows, step the feet forward. Coming back into our forward fold, shake the head out. Keep the right foot where it is, step the left foot back two feet. Inhale and halfway lift. Bend the knees as much as you need to find support or straighten them. Pull the right hip back in space. Slide the left block to the inside of that left, or the inside of the right foot, and start to pick the right hand up. Squeeze the inner thighs, drop the hips down. Twist on purpose. Feel the whole of the torso move around that line and come up. Very nice, yogis. Feeling this in the outer hip. And then gently take the right hand down to the block. Pour your weight into that right foot. Left toe still connected. Bend the right knee as you step the left foot back. You're in your runner's lunge. From here, we'll widen the blocks just a little bit if they're too close. Press down with the blocks. Hollow out the upper back. Think about shifting your weight into your hands and your left foot. Bend the right knee, pull it into the chest and then step it all the way back or in plank for the last time. Bend the knees, roll forward onto the tiptoes, connect the knees to the mat, widen the knees as much as possible and sink the hips back. As you sink the hips back, keep the chest lifted, look forward, chin is elevated above the line of the biceps. Breathe here. And then gently start to roll the blocks out of the way, slide them forward, pick the hips up so now they're in the same plane as the knees. And maybe they stay right here, this might feel really nice. And we'll start to slide the knees out right and left. Keeping the hips and knees in one line, maybe big toes tracking towards one another if you feel this in the inner thighs. Or maybe taking the feet in line with the knees, flexing the feet and letting the hips fall down. So instead of letting the belly fall, which we all tend to do here, I want us to keep the spine. I want us to keep the navel center squeezing in, pressing down with the forearms, shoulders rolling back, and letting it feel as though we're trying to press our knees through the floor, but keeping our glutes active. Breathing here for one more breath. And then gently shifting the weight forward, extending the legs back behind us. Taking the hands underneath the shoulders, we'll press into our cobra from the very start of class. Settling in a little bit higher than before, elbows in, looking forward. Try not to draw the neck too far up so that we're staying neutral with the spine. And then gently bring the solar plexus down to the mouth. That same spot that was resting on a block is now resting onto the earth. 
walk the elbows into the body, and now we'll flutter the legs. Just feeling our low back engage and disengage as we bring one leg and then the other. And then letting them fall right and left. Gently taking a big inhale. And as you exhale, bringing the feet back down to the mat. Slowly bringing that right knee out to the right. Taking your left hand feeding it underneath the right, and we'll roll onto our backs right into a really nice twist to reset as we unwind towards our Shavasana. We played a lot with twists today, really trying to wake up, energize, and nourish our solar plexus so that we can move from the inside out. Gently start to roll back onto your belly. Elbows under the shoulders, slide that right knee back. Drag the left knee out to the left. Thread the right arm underneath the left. Take a hold of that thigh and then roll onto your back. Situating the shoulders so that they're away from one another. Being really mindful of the SI joint here if you have some pain. Just backing out of that twist a little bit so that you don't have to be all the way over to the floor finding a space that is comfortable in your body. Big inhale here. As you exhale, rolling back onto our bellies, taking our hands and moving them back by our hips, swaying the hips side to side to reach the feet back behind us. On an inhale, just interlacing the fingers behind our back and then lifting in to a half locust. Hands have been removed from our cobra. You can feel all that strength in the lower body pressing down, the upper body lifting up and out, and then gently unbraiding the fingers, taking the hands onto the mat and rolling onto our back. Taking a moment in constructive rest after some of that bending, walk the feet as wide as your mat. The knees will knock in. We'll take our hands and rest them right onto our hip points. Letting ourselves fidget as much as we need to find some space. Big inhale here. On the exhale, let the knees come apart. Start to walk the feet in towards one another, crossing the right leg over the left, maybe staying here, or hugging the knees into the chest, Just feeling the tailbone start to descend towards the outside edge of your mat. And releasing the hands down by your side, unwinding the legs. Crossing the left leg over the right, and then dragging those knees into your chest here, squeezing in, dropping the tailbone again. It's easy to arch it up towards the sky, but we want to feel that a little more through the back. And then releasing, taking a full body stretch, reach the arms out behind, the toes out in front, and then just softening onto our backs. I'm going to take a moment to open the hands, to open the feet, to relax the bottom jaw, turn the head maybe right and left, and then eventually softening the eyes closed. Using each exhale to try and let go of some piece of tension. Maybe the shoulders, still feel active and we try to let the shoulder blades melt down the body. And taking a big inhale through the nose, soft sigh out the mouth. Let it all go. Stay here on your backs as long as time will allow. Thank you.
you so much for sharing your practice and your energy with me. Namaste.